Okay, in this video we're going to begin our discussion on rational expressions, and before we get into that we're going to do a quick review of what rational numbers are. So before I start with just the definition of rational numbers, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, some examples first. And uh, when I start talking about rational numbers, I usually start by looking at money. And I'll ask the question to the class, how much is a penny worth? And lots of students will come back and say that a penny is worth one cent, uh, or they'll use the terminology like this, one cent. Or they may even write a penny is worth point zero uh, one dollars. And all of that uh, is perfectly fine. That's a fine way of reporting this. But uh, this particular notion here, calling a penny worth $0.01, is, is uh, pretty helpful because it actually leads us into this rational number description. Another way to write $0.01 is to write it like this, one one-hundredth of a dollar. And so we can write this decimal as a fraction. Now when it comes to money, that's usually not uh, what we do, but it is important to note that both of these represent the same thing. They mean the same thing. Now if we use this terminology in another example, we might say this, that a nickel is worth $0.05, or we might say that it's worth five one-hundredths of a dollar, and both of those are pretty good too. Now, if you're wondering where the fraction is coming from, let's take note here that in the decimal positions we have a tenths place. It's getting kind of sloppy here, so we'll write it this way. This is our tenths place of the decimal, and this is our hundredths place of the decimal. And since the decimal extended to the hundredths place, I can write this number, 0, 05, or just the number 5 in this case, over 100, and that's its fractional equivalent. So let's see another one. A dime then is worth 0 0.10 dollars. Now again, we've extended to the hundredths place, even though this is a 0. We've extended to the hundredths place, so I can write 10 over 100 as a fraction. And then a quarter, 0 0.25, or 25 one hundredths of a dollar. Now writing these fractions is uh, helpful from a math teacher's perspective or a math student's perspective, but one thing that you may know about fractions is that if we can reduce them to lowest terms, we, can, we should, uh, and we can do so in these three instances here. Uh, the number five one hundredths will reduce to one twentieth, so we can say that a nickel is worth one twentieth of a dollar. A dime is worth one tenth of a dollar because the fraction ten over a hundred reduces to one tenth. And then finally, uh, twenty-five over one hundredths reduces to one fourth of a dollar, or in other words, one quarter of a dollar. And maybe that's where this coin got its name, a quarter of a dollar. Now the way we reduce these fractions, uh, we've got some techniques that we'll talk about, but if you are already aware of a technique, then you can use that to reduce your fractions. Um, but we'll talk about another technique here in a few moments in this video. So if you're not quite sure how these reductions were completed, um, hang tight, we'll talk about them here in a few minutes. Let's transition now away from dollars and talk about time. What portion of an hour passes in 30 minutes? Well, if I've got 30 minutes out of an hour, an hour is worth 60 minutes, we can say 30 sixtieth of an hour passes in 30 minutes. Or in other words, that's one half, or one half of an hour. Half of an hour is the same as 30 minutes. What portion of an hour passes in 15? Well, 15 over 60 is the fraction that's represented there. And when we reduce 15 over 60, that's going to turn into one-fourth, or a quarter hour. So as it turns out, um, when we talk about fractions, especially fractions in the real world, they tend to be reduced to lowest terms. And fractions are numbers that can be written as fractions, even if they're not always written as fractions, are what we call rational numbers. So we're dealing with rational numbers in this unit, and rational numbers are simply numbers that are written or can be written as fractions. 
Now, I know it's not everybody's favorite uh, portion of the class, but we do need to discuss fractions. We do need to work with them in this class. So we're going to try to uh, do so in a more of a uh, real-world context. And so our formal definition states that a rational number is a number of the form a divided by b, where a and b are integers, and b is not allowed to be equal to zero. So if you recall, integers are numbers that are either positive or negative with no decimals. So no decimals. They can again be positive or negative. And so as long as we say that b is not equal to zero, then we can pick any combination of two integers, two non-decimal value numbers, and write them as a fraction, and that could report, or that would report a, um, a rational number. So here's an example. If I write the number 5, now the 5 is technically a rational number. Even though it's just a single value, I could write it as 5 divided by 1. And now I have an a value and a b value that are integers. Both a and b are integers, and b is not equal to 0. So because of that, then I can write the number 5 as a fraction. We would call this a rational number. Same thing with the number 0 0.2. Now I said that we are not allowed to use decimals, but if I change this to its fraction like we saw just a minute ago, since this 2 is in the tenths place, I can write this as 2 over 10. Now I have an a and a b value that are integers. b is not equal to 0. And this fraction is the same as 0 0.2, so we would say that 0 0.2 is a rational number. Finally, if I have the number 0 0.3 repeating, this, if you recall, is a fraction known as 1 third, again with an a and a b value that are integers. b is not equal to 0, and we've got ourselves in a, uh, uh, we've got ourselves a rational number that started off as a fraction that was changed into a decimal. So the decimals and the whole numbers themselves are not a problem, but because we could rewrite it into this form with a divided by b, that's what makes these all examples of rational numbers. Now I hope that you recognize that having a b value of 0 is going to cause us a problem. Let's say I had the fraction uh, 6 over uh, 0. Well, the fraction 6 over 0 is kind of like a mini division problem, and that would be just like asking us to divide 6 by 0. And it's impossible to divide by 0. This produces what we call an undefined result. So 6 over 0, while it may look like a rational number because it's written as a fraction, since our b value is 0, this reduced fraction becomes undefined. And speaking of reduced fractions, again, our goal is to write all of our fractions in reduced form. So let's take a look at 2 over 10. We'll talk a little bit about that technique. If I had the fraction 2 over 10, that one does conform to the uh, description or the definition of our rational functions. We have two integers where b is not equal to 0. But I also want to note here that the number 2, we can imagine that as a 2 times 1. And the number 10, we can imagine as a 2 times 5. And we saw way back in the beginning of this class this semester that if I have uh, expressions that are in a fraction or terms that are being divided by one another, if they have a common term separated by multiplication signs, then those two common terms will cancel each other or factor one another out, and they can disappear from the expression itself. So the 2 over 10 fraction with the factors of 2 canceled or disappeared would reduce to 1 -fifth. So reducing these fractions is helpful to know, uh, but also knowing about fractions, reciprocals, or multiplicative inverses is helpful to know as well. We're not going to be working with multiplicative inverses this week. We'll get into that next week, but it's important to know what they are as we look forward to the rest of this unit. A multiplicative inverse or reciprocal is simply the same rational form of the uh, rational number just flipped over. It's um, reciprocal means to flip a fraction, so that's exactly what we would do here to find a reciprocal. Now what's nice about this is that the product 
of a rational number and its reciprocal will always equal 1. And part of the reason for that is that if we multiply these two fractions together, a times b and b times a, we get the same result on the top and the bottom. a times b is the same as b times a. And as we had mentioned before, if there's a number on the top and the bottom separated by multiplication signs, they can cancel each other out or factor one another to equal 1. So at this point in the video, I'd like for you to identify what the multiplicative inverses or the reciprocal of each of these uh, rational numbers are. Pause the video now and resume playback in a moment to check your work. And these are the reciprocals. Let's look at them one at a time. For question 3, 4, and 5, I don't think there's much of a challenge. We see that we have the fraction 3 over 8. Uh, if we flip that fraction over, we'd have 8 over 3. If I were to multiply these two together as a quick check, 3 over 8 times 8 over 3 would equal 24 over 24, which reduces to the number 1. So check that one. We've got a good reciprocal. Same thing with number 4, 7 over 12. If we flip that, we get 12 over 7. And the check would perform the same way. And then in number 5, negative 2 over 7, its reciprocal would be 7 over negative 2. Now as a side note, 7 divided by negative 2 would be the same as negative 7 divided by positive 2, and that would also be the same as a negative sign in front of 7 over 2, positive 7 over 2. So it's worth noting that it doesn't matter where the negative sign is reported, as long as there's only one of them in the fraction, then all three of these formats mean the same thing. So um, <clears throat> here in this case, if I had negative 2 over 7, I probably would call its reciprocal 7 over negative 2. But if I had 2 over negative 7, I'd call it negative 7 over 2 as the reciprocal. And then in this case, the negative sign out front um, beyond that reciprocal. And that's okay. Any one of those are perfectly fine. For number 6 and number 7, we might have to think about it just a little bit, but let's note that any whole number can be written as a fraction if we treat that as a whole number over 1. So the number 8 could be the same as 8 over 1, and if we find the reciprocal of that, we are left with 1 over 8, and it would check just like the others would have as well. This would be identified as a reciprocal after we multiply them together. And then finally with number 7, we can note that the number 1 is equal to 1 over 1, and if we flip that, then we get another fraction, 1 over 1. We get the exact same thing, which also reduces to 1. So that's kind of interesting in that this number 1 is its own reciprocal. It's its own inverse. So I'm going to stop this video here. Uh, that was a relatively short introduction compared to other videos in this class, but um, that introduction here was just to remind you about rational numbers, how they behave, what they look like. Uh, all of these are examples of rational numbers, also known as fractions. Now, in the next video, we're going to cover rational expressions, which are also fractions, but instead of being fractions of numbers, we're going to deal with fractions of expressions, and we're going to see letters involved with them. So we'll talk a little bit about how to reduce them, how to work with the reciprocals, and what type of math we can get to by using rational expressions. Till then, thanks for watching.